Hello YouTube, this is Mark from Abilities, and today I wanted to show you an adaptive product design that I came up with for this Dyson handheld vacuum. Now, traditionally, what I used to use to vacuum my house was an upright vacuum, and I would put it between my legs, and I'd bend the handle down, and I'd flip on the switch, and because I could flip on the switch and keep the vacuum on, I would just push my chair like a snow plow and try to vacuum. Now you can imagine that's not probably the safest thing to do, especially because that piece in between my legs is probably gonna turn and bend and it could uh, cause damage to my legs and to my skin. Uh, so you know, I, I used that for a while and then um, you know, eventually my parents saw this vacuum and they said, hey Mark, why don't you try this? This might work really well for you, right? Um, so they bought this a couple years ago and it, it is really awesome. I mean, if, if you're familiar with the Dyson products, I mean, they're, they're super sexy. Uh, the colors, the attachments, everything. It's the sleek design. It's really, really well made. Uh, you know, the bagless stuff is pretty cool. Uh, but the one thing that I, that I disliked about this unit was the fact that it had a trigger, right? So like I said with the other vacuums, you could flip on a switch and keep the vacuum running. But with this particular unit, you actually have to engage the trigger. So I'm gonna just try to do this here. You see, you can kind of, I can kind of do it with my tenodesis and a little bit of a spasm. Um, but that's not, that's not really gonna work for me, right? Because if I'm gonna have to push my chair and try to hold the trigger and hold this thing, that's problematic. So I, you know, for a while, I didn't want to use this unit. Uh, even as, as nice as it is, as efficient as it is, um, I was really turned off by it. So then fast forward to COVID, quarantine, we're all home, right? And, you know, as I'm working my job, being with the family, I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to kind of be creative. And, you know, doing adaptive design is something that I've always wanted to do. It's just I never really had the tools to do it. It was just really cost prohibitive, right? So I started looking up 3D printers and software, like CAD software, thinking this was going to be a huge learning curve. And, you know, to be honest, um, you know, I'm not going to say that the products were cheap, but they were relatively inexpensive. You know, to get a 3D printer, you can get something for like $160 uh, between, you know, 160 or 300 and get something that's relatively good. Uh, and then, you know, for CAD software, a lot of times you can sign up and say, I'm a student or I'm, I'm a small business or I'm a nonprofit. And a lot of these places will let you have a year for free. Uh, so that's kind of what I did. And I started experimenting with it. It just, it, it just kind of, my passion kind of drove it and, and it came to life. So what I, what I ended up doing was I thought, okay, how can I hold this vacuum and still engage the trigger so that I can still move my chair and do what I want to do? And so my first thought was a product that I use every day and I want to share that with you. And that's, that's this reacher here from Quad Tools. So as a, as a C5-6, I mean, it's really more C6, uh, I have wrist extension. And because I have wrist extension, I can use this really great product which allows me to bend my wrist and engage these teeth right here. Right? I did a video on this cleaning my living room, but just, just in case you haven't seen it, um, I use this every day. I use it for so many things. I'm actually thinking of getting another one that, uh, you know, just a little bit newer because I've used this to death and I probably should clean it up a little bit. Uh, but I ended up buying tongs for my barbecue and I also have a knife. So I'm gonna do some videos using those as well, but it's really, really cool product. If you have wrist extension and you're kind of in that sweet spot, or even if you have like no wrist extension, I, I believe that they have like a, a sip and puff version, which is really cool. Uh, but but this, is, this is huge. This, enable, this allows me to be very independent, doing a lot of things. Um, so I love it. So I thought, okay, how do I incorporate that into my design so that I can make this nice and vacuum work? So the first thought was, okay, I need something that will attach to this handle. That's gonna be one of the biggest issues. So I started, you know, I bought a pair of calipers, which I don't have them here, but it's just, you know, to measure in millimeters. And, uh, you know, I, I used uh, a protractor and some different things to come up with angles. So I ended up coming up with this piece right here, and I don't know how well you can see it, but this piece basically attaches um, to this guy here. It doesn't attach easily. I'll show you how it goes on, but it basically snaps on to place. So that was the first thing. I wanted to have something that would hold it. And then the next was designing some type of a, a, a cuff to do the wrist extension. So this is actually for someone who's right-handed, but I just wanted to show you. 
Okay, so this would go on like so. And the idea would be that, um, you know, it would attach, oh, I don't know if I'm doing this right, it would attach on here. And then you can see if I turn it, when you do wrist extension, this little piece is going to engage the trigger on the actual unit. So I'll show you what version one looks like just so you can get an idea. All right. Now, um, version one was really designed for a handheld back. I looked at this and said, okay, I want to do this, but let's start small because with a vacuum, there's a large attachment. So if you want to do like a big surface, you're going to need something a little bit more robust than what I created. So I started off saying, okay, let me do a handheld vac, see how that works. And then we can get a little bit more creative on how we could do that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the unit. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this unit so I can get a little bit of leverage. And we're going to just push this bad boy in just like that. Okay. All right. Now let me put this up here, do it to the left side so you can see it. All right. So voila, we have our Dyson adaptive device that will allow us to engage the trigger. You notice that I tried to match it to the purple on here, very fancy. But again, um, this was version one and it, it took all of these pieces kind of working together a little bit of time, but you know, it ended up being, it ended up working out pretty good. So the idea here, again, handheld vacuum, uh, using it in small spaces. Now I have power assist wheels, which is a little bit unfair because I know that not everybody does. And if you're on carpet, it would be really hard to manage holding this and rolling around. So my suggestion is if you had something like this, you kind of zero in on the place where you're going to vacuum with the handheld back, and then you can go for it. Now I have my push handles on the back, which you're gonna see me, I use these a lot. This allows me to get down really low to those places that I'm gonna need to vacuum. So let's go ahead and get this going. So I'm gonna put my hand over, slide it in, put my hand on top so I don't tip this bad boy over, and you can see I have my hand on the cuff. Now, if I go ahead and turn, I'm gonna engage the trigger, okay? Now, this is very comfortable. It's not real heavy. Now, if you don't have a lot of shoulder function, this might be hard to do. Um, so it, it's gonna be different for everyone, right? All of us spinal cord injuries are like snowflakes. Um, we're all different. So I'm just gonna show you. If I were to engage the trigger, I can lean over, I can back you, right? Turn it off, and maybe I decide, okay, I'm gonna lean over. And depending on you know your comfort level, you might have no balance. You might want to put a strap over your, your stomach and your chest so that you can do more of these things. So you can get down low, get those little pieces. That's kind of the idea. Um, this was really designed to be flexible, but you may have to incorporate some other things in there, right? You might have a Velcro strap you want to, sorry, Velcro strap you want to use, those kind of things. But at least this is a start, right? This gives you an opportunity to use a nice piece of equipment like this Dyson. And, um, you know, I, I welcome your questions and your comments on this because I wanna make it better, right? I want everyone who has this issue to be able to use this product, right? To have it be, be very inclusive. Okay, now, uh, because this is a handheld device, you're gonna see back here in our design that the, this part of the handle is exposed, right? And what that means is that if we were to attach the big attachment, right? The big dog, I think I have it right here. Um, you know, this very large guy, um, this whole piece is gonna snap off. Um, and that's just because of the awkward weight. It's not that it's super heavy, it's just it's long. So that weight on the end is gonna force this piece to wanna like pop off. And so that's why I had to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, how can I make this a little bit easier? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this one off and I'm going to show you version 2.0. So in version 2.0, there were a couple things that I had to take into consideration. The first thing was, is this, this kind of rear area. So how do I lock this in place? So what I did was I designed a piece, now we're switching to the right-handed piece. I designed a piece that had um, some grooves in here. I don't know if you can see those grooves, but that allowed me to design like a locking sleeve. So this sleeve right here, it's designed to really fit snug 
on the back of this and it's got a little loop so you can hold it. Now, when it's not around the actual device, it's a little bit loose and that's because um, when it's on the actual unit, it expands a little bit. Um, and, and that's probably due to my lack of perfect engineering of, of how this was made, but uh, it, it works pretty good. So once that's on, you can see it creates this nice enclosure and it, it, when it's on here, it's, it's pretty snug. So that this whole thing's not gonna slip around. And that allows you to put the larger, um, you know, uh, larger attachment on there. Now the other thing that I was concerned about, and that I, I probably did more of these than anything else, was the flex and the strength of the cuff for my forearm. So this piece right here that you see, it's, it's really, it's kind of flimsy. Sorry, let me get the, it's kind of flimsy. And it, it definitely would not support the weight of the larger attachment. So this is probably like version 10. <laughs> and this ended up working really well. I beefed it up a lot so that it could handle the weight. Now, again, this is a prototype, right? This is a proof of concept. This is not a commercial grade product. So even though it works, chances are over time it's gonna break, right? It's really just to say, this works, how do I put this into production and make it commercial grade? This particular piece, um, I can't put it on after the fact, whereas this one I can. So I just have to put this on now. So let me do that. I'll take this sleeve off and we'll go ahead and get this piece going. So I have um, this little deal right here where it slides into. Again, this is for a right-handed individual. This is gonna fit in here a little bit more snug than the purple one. Um, all right, so we're good to go. So now I got this bad boy ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna detach this and we're gonna put on the big attachment, okay? All right, so now I have the large attachment on the Dyson and I'm gonna show you how this works with our version 2.0. Now one of the things, the key things that I didn't get to show you now that we have the unit on here is this locking sleeve. I wanna show you how this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently turn this vacuum so that you can kind of get an idea as to how this locking sleeve works. Let me see here. If I can finagle this in a way that works. All right, so we'll go with that. All right, so now what we have in the rear here is this sleeve. You can see it right here. And the nice thing about this is, like I said, when the piece goes on here, it expands a little bit. So this, this sleeve becomes actually really, really tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and one thing I need to do is just make sure that this piece is all the way down because I made these really, really snug so that way we get the best, um, you know, touching of the parts. All right, so once I get this on, line it up, you can see it's really snug to get on, but you can use your index finger to kind of push it down. And I just usually will just use my wrist to kind of bang it down. Now see, it's on really, really good right now. This is very, very tight. And I have this little loop here, so like if you wanted to lift the unit up, you could do so. Now one of the important things is you want to make sure that this is all the way up because you want that trigger to engage this part really, really well. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hand underneath here and just push that unit all the way up. All right, so now we're good to go. Now, um, again, I have the power assist wheels. So this is going to be a little bit easier for me to manage. And, you know, please keep in mind I'm left-handed, but I wanted to show you with this right-handed model how this would work. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down on the ground like so. I'm gonna put my arm through here. I'm gonna put my hand in the cuff. You can see when I turn it, I'm gonna engage it, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you, because of uh, you know all the uh, changes, how I can lift this up and switch sides. So I'm gonna start with the left, and then I'm gonna switch to the right, okay? Bring it over, like this. And then I can go ahead and bring this over here. Right. With this side. I'm going to move my chair a little bit, get this piece, and then up, oh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here, so it's pretty strong, um, you know, it allows you to do a lot. Right. So I'm really happy with this version 2.0 because uh, now I can use the larger attachment and I can do the larger part of the house. So please leave your comments and questions below. I'm really interested to see you know, what your thoughts are on 
version 1.0, version 2.0, and how something like this might work for you. Uh, because I think for me and other individuals out there that have hand dexterity issues, this would be a really great option so that we can have an inclusive design, right? I mean, Dyson doesn't have to go back and redesign this whole thing so that we can use it. We could just have a product like this that snaps on and allows us to use the same quality vacuum that you know you can go and buy anywhere, right? Um, so anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Um, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm gonna be posting more videos on these product designs. I know I've said that in the past that I'd be posting videos, but I'm back. So I'm gonna be doing this, trying to do it every couple of weeks, get a video out. Uh, but no, uh, thank you for joining me. Continue to work hard on your independence, and I look forward to engaging with all of you here in the future. Thank you.